<laughs> well, I tell you, I've been wrestling all week. I started out, uh, I wanted to preach a Father's Day sermon, but the Lord wouldn't let me. So, what he wanted me to do is talk to you about something I feel is so very important for two reasons. One uh, is because I think we are in a period of time today where we can see all of this taking place. And uh, I want to turn again to the book of Revelation, 13th chapter. Another reason I want to do this is because on Sunday nights, we're looking at the book of Revelation. And if you haven't been here for any of this, you've missed it. Uh, this is a great study of the book of Revelation and things, you know, that will take place, especially in the days of the Great Tribulation. But that today, I want us to look at, at counterfeit religion. Counterfeit religion. We begin with verse 11 of uh, chapter 13. And he says, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now this is known by most people as a false prophet. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell in the earth by the means of these miracles which he has power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which is wounded by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as he would not to worship uh, the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes them all, both small, great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. And we talked about that last Sunday night, the mark of the beast. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day in which you've given to us. I pray that you'll speak through this, your servant, the words that you'd have me speak. I pray, Lord God, that each one of us will realize that <clears throat> we are today living in some troubling times. And counterfeit religion is one of those things that is marching onward. Father, forgive us and encourage us to be what you'd have us to be and to depend upon you in everything that we do. For we pray and we ask all these things in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, we've looked. Now, first of all, I want to just bring you up to speed here a little bit. Now, Satan has his trinity. You know, we, God has the trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Satan has his trinity. But Satan is against God. The word anti means against. You know, uh, Antichrist, of course, is against Christ. And the false prophet is the, he's against the Holy Spirit. So all of these, we see, we understand. Now we've looked at the Antichrist, and uh, you know, in days past, we also looked last week a little bit at the false prophet. The one who comes, what, the, the Antichrist comes up out of the raging sea of chaos and what have you. The other comes up, the false prophet comes up from the earth from an ordered society, but the two of them bring all of this under the Antichrist. Now, all the political things, we talked about that, will be brought under the dominion of the Antichrist. But now the false prophet comes on the scene and he's going to bring religion under the control of Satan. And how did he do that? Well, He'll do it through a counterfeit religion. You know, the reason I want us to look at this again is that 
We are facing this today, right now. And I want to give you the reasons why. First of all, the counterfeit church today says what the world wants to say, the world wants to hear. Yo, know, whatever pleases the world, the itching ears of the people, you know, now let me say this to you, it's a rare thing for a true prophet of God to say what the world wants to hear. Just don't do it. Preachers preach the word of God. They don't, people don't want to hear that. You know, remember the 400 prophets of Baal told old Ahab, you go up to battle and you will win. No problem. But Jehoshaphat said to him, said, listen, you know, there is a true prophet in the land. You need to listen to him. Ahab said, yeah, but he always is against me. <laughs> well, that's true today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, he was right too because the old prophet Micah said, you go on up to battle and you'll be killed. And Ahab said, well, I told him. He never says anything good to me. And that's the way it's been down through the years. Amos said, you know, the people, to the people of Israel, you're laying around on your feather beds and, you know, eating fruit and having a great time and you're sinning and you're on your way to destruction. They didn't want to hear that. Remember Jeremiah said, judgment is coming. The people didn't want to hear that. Counterfeit religion says what the world wants to hear. And people today, you know, fall for that so quickly. You hear today, there is no judgment. God's not going to judge you. There is no hell. Just do your good work. <laughs> work hard. Everything's going to be all right. And millions and millions of people fall right into that. Because they want to hear that. They have itching ears. They like that. They like to hear someone say, Oh, now you don't have to accept Christ to be saved. Just go ahead and do your thing. Go where you want to go, so forth. Then everything's going to be all right. No, it won't be all right. I'm telling you that the only way to be saved is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ who died on Calvary's cross for your sake. Counterfeit religion says what the world wants to hear. Counterfeit religion also teaches what the world wants to talk. You know, you, you hear people today, stop using the Bible. Well, no, in, no intelligent, they always put that in there, if you've got any brains, I guess. What well, You know, no intelligent person believes in miracles of God. Hmm. What? You know, crossing the Red Sea on dry ground? Gee. They got 150 different reasons why it didn't happen and how it could have happened or so forth. By the way, we did a Sunday school lesson this morning about Jericho, or last week is about crossing the Jordan River at flood time. Oh, you don't believe that, do you? The water stood up. Oh, come on now. And they go on that. <laughs> no. And one you hear more of probably than any other. How in the world would ever believe that a fish would swallow old John. Well, that's just something made up. It's a tall tale. These say, listen, these things are told from pulpits like fairy tales. But people believe. They want to hear that. People want to hear that, you see. Because it doesn't put them on. They don't have to accept the fact that Jesus died for them on Calvary's cross. You hear people today say, well, we involved from uh, some kind of scum. <laughs> Always start that. We may have, I don't know. But, you know, we moved up to a tadpole, lost her tail, and eventually walked upright. All that kind of stuff. But people want to hear that. I'm telling you, it would be easier for me to believe that God created this world and man in six days it would be to believe that I involved out of a scum <coughs> pool or something. That, you know. But hey, listen. People want to hear that. 
because they don't have the, the reason they don't they want to hear it is because one day they're going to stand before the Lord and they don't want to have to give an account of what they have done. That's right. You see. <laughs> you know, denominations today, certainly I thank God for that Baptist heaven. But denominations today have taken the blood, the blood is torment out of hymns, you know. But I don't know about you, but why? How would you want to sing out of a hymn book but didn't have anything in there about the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't want that. And as long as I'm pastor, we're not going to have that. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, this is. <laughs> It's so sad, but that's what people people want, you know. <laughs> if I heard this the other day, and I thought this is great, you know what a deal this is. Now listen, someone said on television, you know, if you never teach your child about sin, they'll never sin. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, God said we were born in sin, conceived in iniquity. Romans three twenty three. False religion, see, wants man. They want to teach what man wants to hear. There's no hell when you die. Hey, <coughs> you know, I remember my uncle, great uncle he was, but he always said, you know, when, it, when I die, he said, just take me over back of the hill there and throw me where we put that old horse when it died. That's just it. You know. People want that. Hey, why are we going to through all of this trouble of, of having funerals and things of that nature? Just cremate me. Put me somewhere no one will ever know what happened to me. That thing. It, the, the sad thing about all that is that people say there's no hell. <laughs> when you die, that's just the end of it. No heaven. By the way, I heard some guy say the other day, that heaven will just be a welfare state right here. Wow. Yeah, the government will take care of every problem you've got. What makes no difference why it is, and they'll pay you away and feed you and everything else. That's what heaven's all about. Oh, listen to me, dear friends. Don't get caught up in all of that. Counterfeit religion teaches what men want to hear. It says what they want to hear, and it teaches what they want to hear. But let me also say something else. Counterfeit religion enjoys what the world enjoys. And I'm thinking that we are here now. You know, Satan is working overtime to bring this about. You know, television shows today. Isn't that interesting? Television shows today, they, they show people having so much fun. Here's 50 people out by the pool and they all got beautiful tans and what have you. They're all drinking the, the Jim Bean or Jack Daniels or something. <laughs> On drugs, having sex, watching dirty movie, movies. And they say, oh, this is a good life. <laughs> this is what it is. Well, I want to say to you this morning for me, that is not the good life. You know, they don't tell you the truth, though. You notice, ever notice that? They don't tell you the truth. You, you don't, what you don't see is the sickness and the disease. Uh, you know, mothers weeping over their children who are on drugs or young girls who are pregnant or all of those things. You don't see that. They don't show you that. And bodies that are mingled with AIDS and, and all kind of different things. But false religion, counterfeit religion says, enjoy what the world enjoys. And I want to tell you today, my dear friends, that thousands of people are falling for that. They just say, oh, okay, that's, that's a great life. That's great. You, oh, I tell you, I was over in the, uh, I forget now where is that? One of those doctors or someone said and talked. This young girl, she was telling me, you know, oh, last night, you know, she went to a pool party, had a great time, you know, really enjoyed it. And that was on Thursday. And I said, well, I went to church last night, and I really enjoyed that. 
she got up and moved. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that counterfeit religion will just say what the world wants you to say. Then they enjoy that. <laughs> They'll enjoy what the world enjoys. But that's not all of it. Counterfeit church will offer religion in a way that will be hard not to accept. That's what, now, here we're talking about, of course, the great tribulation period. But I'm saying to you that it's here today. All of these things that I've said are here today. It says what the world wants here. Preaches what the world wants preached. Enjoys what the world enjoys. Those things are here. It's all right here with us today. One of the things, you know, I just looked at a, a piece of mail I had. It, it says, come on now, let's all get together. We're going to Orlando. Now, this is great, isn't it? I got nothing against Orlando, but come on down to Orlando. We're going to have all these different groups of people come together, and we're going to sing and praise God and, and what have you. And then we're going out there and ride some kind of boat, you know, and enjoy all of that. Probably go to Universal and Disney and what have you. But you know what? That doesn't make a church stronger. It makes it weaker. Because when you get all these people together, then what happens is that they begin telling about things that the itching ears want to hear. This is the way we do it, you know. And that's great. No, listen to me. I want to tell you how we do it here at Friendship Baptist Church. We take the Word of God and we stay with it. Amen. We don't have to go to Orlando to figure that out. We don't have to ride some boat. We don't have to have some guy who has a lot of brains, you know, to stand up and tell us uh, what to do, do we? You guys are smart, I know you know. <laughs> You see, what happens here, you know, when you do all of these kind of things, everything becomes diluted. It's not long until one begins to question, you know, what? You begin to question things that you've held dear. You know, things that you've read from God's Word or heard from God's Word. One of the things, you know, they're talking about now is marriage vows. Who needs them? That's what they say. Who needs marriage vows? Just go ahead and live together. That's what most people are doing anyway. I, you know what else they say? You go to your church and I'll go to mine. And the children, when they grow up, they can go wherever they want to. You know what happens? They don't go anywhere. None of them go to church. <laughs> you know, many people today do not believe in Christ. They don't, they don't believe in any things that you read from God's Word. And you have all of these cults around too, you know, that tell people, they, they tell people what they want to hear. You can find out right here in Sun City Center. You ever wonder why they got all these groups that meet over there in the, in the center and all those things? You know, some of them you don't even know what they are. They just meet. And... By the way, Mormons, Mormons, they focus on the family. Boy, and I'm telling you, it looks so good, so good. You know. You know what? They leave out the most important thing of all, though, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. They leave him out as Savior. They don't leave him out completely, but they leave him out as Savior. And today you hear people say, well, listen, the only way you'll be saved is to join this group or join that group. You have to be baptized in order to be saved. You've got to be circumcised. It's all counterfeit. The Bible does not say that. 
And that's how the false prophet's going to get people to follow the beast. He'll say what the world wants hear, teach what the world wants taught, enjoy what the world wants and what the world enjoys, and everyone will come together and sing praises not to God. Come together and sing praises unto the Antichrist. That's what he's saying. And to the false prophet, by the way. Remember this. You, you, do you ever notice what the Bible calls them? Calls them beast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> beast. Now true religion, true religion is found in Jesus Christ and Him alone. You can come boldly unto Him. And oh, by the way, all you have to do is believe. He did it all on Calvary's cross. You know, some will say, well, why can't I just put it all? Why don't I just wait? Listen to me now for a moment. The Lord has given each of us a certain amount of time. He's given you a certain amount of time to be saved. And if you're lost this morning, my dear friend, listen to me. Your time might be up. Christians, he's given us a certain amount of time to serve him. And we need to do it. Because one day, he will bring it all to an end. We need to be prepared. We need to be ready to do whatever it is that he has called us to do. Let me, I just asked you this question this morning. Are you ready if he came today? If your number was called today, are you ready? That's a question that you need to answer. If you can't say that you're ready, let me just quote again from Romans 10, 9. It says, if I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now that's not hard, is it? Why in the world people won't accept him and give their heart to him, I don't know. But I do know this, that Satan is working over time. You know what? Just yesterday, over in Charleston, uh, South Carolina, a tragic thing took place. I was so happy, so I could just have shouted, really. But those mothers and fathers and friends are the ones that were killed. They said to that young boy who did it, we forgive you. We forgive you. Oh, dear friends, I don't know. But that's not what the world wanted to hear. The world didn't want to hear that. The world wanted to hear, why don't you just go shoot him or kill him or oh, drag him through the streets or what have you. That's it. But those people said, we forget. Jesus Christ loves you so much that he forgive you your sins. Trust him. Depend upon him. He'll save you. If you're already saved, he'll keep you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Let us pray. Almighty God, I realize that we live in a day and time when this false religion is moving forward at a tremendous pace because it says what people want to hear. It teaches what people want taught. It enjoys what the world enjoys. And that's the way people want it. But oh God, I pray that we'll never get away from your wonderful, precious, holy word that tells us that you left your throne in glory 
You came down to this earth as a babe in Bethlehem. You dwelt among men, went to Calvary's cross, and shed your precious blood upon the cross. And all who will believe, oh, all who will believe, will be saved. I pray this morning, Lord God, if there's one here who's never truly accepted you as a personal Savior, that today they would open up their hearts and invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come in. And for those of us who are Christians, oh God, help us to be ready and willing to serve you and do what you would have us to do with our lives. But most of all, help us, oh God, not to get caught up in this saying of false religion, what the false church wants to put out and entice people to come and join them. Oh God, I pray we never get away from your precious word that we stay with it until you call us home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.